<laughs> I just say shit. Alright, let's loosen up. Let's loosen up. Let's loosen up. Nectar Heart Seltzer sponsor. All right, you guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to yet another King James video. So as you guys can see, we have a very special guest here on the channel that you guys have seen a ton of already. This right here is my friend from another mother, my brother, Gable Kimbrough. Hi. <laughs> Ready. I'm putting that in. I'm still out <laughs> I mean, I know you're good. A couple of weeks ago, Gable and I headed out on a mission and we wanted to really test what a digicam can do compared to a film camera. Trying to see if a digicam can replace a 35 millimeter film camera. Essentially just because with the rise of digicams and you know them being not super expensive, affordable. And with film prices rising, a lot of people are pulling back on shooting film and opting for these smaller digicams. And so we wanted to test some results, some side-by-sides. And so we went out, we took the same photographs. Uh, we're gonna talk about our setups here in just a second, but the goal really was just to put two cameras side by side and to compare the results. And so that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing in this episode. We're gonna be going over the photographs, we're gonna analyze them, and then we're gonna kind of do a conclusion on whether or not a digicam can replace a film camera. All right, so without further ado, guys, let's jump right in. All right, you guys, so before we go over some of the images, let's talk first about the setups that we were using. I was shooting with the Nikon F3 and a 50 millimeter lens, and Gable was shooting with the 35 on this end. And show, show do a close-up, man. What camera is that right there? Right here, it's the SD-1000. So the variables weren't all matched up, and that is to be expected. Of course, that is a digital camera, and this is film. And so we wanted to get that out of the way, first and foremost, different focal lengths. And I was shooting with 800 ISO film, and he was shooting with... It's a range from... It's up to 1600. An ISO range, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, let's jump into photograph number one here. All right, so the first image here is of the Capitol building in Sacramento. I'm gonna put the photographs up side by side. And first things first, I want you guys to take note what are some of the key differences that you guys see right off the bat? So checking it side by side here, they're honestly pretty similar. I would say so, yeah, yeah. You know? It might just be the difference also with the film stock. Lomo 800 has more of like that warm, almost like cyan tone. Your image looks really warm as well. i say like, I added it to look definitely warmer. It's kind of green, no? Yeah, it does look really green. It's, it's just green tones. Film for sure definitely comes with its own characteristic off the bat. Whereas like with your file, you were able to kind of manipulate the colors yeah. right a little it, bit. It came out flat and then I would just edit it to, to my eye. Now let's zoom in on the, the sharpness really quick. But I mean, it's not that far off to be honest. After mm -hmm. zooming in 100%. I, I think you get a similar effect, you know, when zooming out. Of course, zooming in, you're gonna see the pixels. Mm. And all that. But you know what surprising though about this? That's 10 megapixels. No, actually it's 7.1. Oh, it's 7.1 yeah, megapixels. 7.1. So for it being such a low megapixel camera, not dissing the camera because obviously it's dope as hell, <laughs> it holds up pretty nicely against this Nikon glass. I would say so, yeah. Like, you know, daytime, kind of heading towards the night, but it's still, I think it's still pretty, pretty good light. Pretty good light. So let's, let's move on to the next image here, which is very similar to the first one. And this one was kind of just like isolating the left side of the Capitol building from a bottom up angle. Uh, you can really tell how wide that lens is compared to this one in this mm -hmm. photo here. Ooh, this one is sharper, the SD-1000. You think so? I think so. I think there's more detail in the film one. Oh, so that's a thing. With film, you really gotta get a high, a high quality scan, I feel like. Cause like certain labs will just do like a 300 DPI scan, mm -hmm. which is good for like small prints or Instagram posts. But if you really want a lot of detail, you're gonna have to pay more out of pocket. You know, I don't, I don't expect too much. So this level of sharpness is completely fine to me. And I, I don't ask for too much more. And part of the reason why a lot of people shoot those cameras too, it's not for like the image quality, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In this yeah. day of age, we got so many good cameras out. Like a fun, mm -hmm. just bring with you. Bring with you, it's something that you're, it's easy to carry around. All right, so the next photo is of a building. And I think in this one, I kind of wanted to test out just the dynamic range because it was backlit. So the, the sun was behind the building and then the far right side of the building here was pretty much in just complete shade. Mm -hmm. um, so comparing the images side to side, I just used the in-camera meter, so I don't even know if I overexposed for this, but... <laughs> hey, yo, this wait, man, wait, hold this up, man. hold on, let me, let me fix the A. <laughs> this man was editing the exposure, which is a plus. Guys, that is a big plus right there. 
<laughs> really, it's good, bro. It's good. It's like film, I swear. Okay, that's obviously a plus of like shooting the SD one thousand. Mm-hmm. You can manipulate exposure to your advantage, mm-hmm. but it's definitely limited. Pretty much, yeah. There's not a whole lot of dynamic range. You're only gonna get so much out of a, a CCD. So I guess in terms of like post processing, mm-hmm. or what, what do you think it has more flexibility, the the digital sensor or the film photographs? Because remember, you're you're not editing a photograph from the film you're editing a scan a scan of the film yeah i would just say the digital image is going to need more work you mm. know some i feel like a lot of times when i've shot film you could just get a good image straight out of camera if you expose correctly but i think i think definitely definitely with digicam to you know to get that that image you're gonna need to put some work into it in post i'd say same goes for film though I guess that's the difference between the two. You're not editing a scan with that. You're actually editing the file itself. Mm-hmm. So this one to me was honestly really surprising. Uh, straight out of the camera from the film side of things. Well, first things first, they look very similar. I would say. Like color wise. I think in the sign, I definitely think you got like, I don't know, more, more pleasing of like the, uh, the colors and stuff. I, I, I think there's just like, you know, there's like fringe, fringing. Mm. Which color do you prefer more, the image from the film or the uh, digital one? Well, especially uh, just trying to work with the colors, you know? I didn't want to try to go too far, but uh, I think just straight out the camera, I would have been like pleased with, with that image. And the way the film looked? Yeah, the way the film looked, yeah. Now, being that this is nighttime, is, is there any noise coming from your... Yeah, absolutely. There's absolutely noise. You look in the shadows. Oh. Uh... Yeah. But I, I think in, in, some, in some images, you might like that type of grain in the shadows. Right. A lot of people say that noise and grain are different because I think they are. I think the, the grain on these smaller cameras can, can definitely be pleasing. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, you're, if you're going for that sort of look, you might like that about Digicams. Yeah, and especially that's an older sensor too. That's why a lot of people say it gives you that almost like film look. It has a character to it. It has a, say. yeah, characteristics of film. All right, let's move on to the IMAX photo, this first one. So first things first, the angles were a little bit different. I think we shot this in two different, maybe starting off with colors. Personally, I like the pop in color coming from the Canon SD-1000. I think it looks really vibrant. It just looks a lot deeper compared to what I was able to capture with the film. The color is there, but like, I don't know if like in these little like strip lights around mm-hmm. the IMAX, it looks a little bit dull, but like, it doesn't look like super saturated to me. Uh, they, they seem probably a little more blown out straight out of the camera. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There is something pleasing about that look in the highlights. Mm-hmm. But I, I think uh, being able to just edit the, uh, the image. Yeah. I was able to just kind of recover some of those um, colors from the highlights. It's like for, it's more contrasty, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a good way. I in a good say. way. Yeah, I like both. Yeah. All right. Next image. So I missed focus on him for sure. Me, me too, though. Me too. If you zoom in, I miss focus. It's more focused on the um, the theater. Mm. But you know what? That's, that's something to talk about. With your digital camera, you have autofocus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not all film cameras have autofocus. Not. Yeah, and in your sense, you were shooting um, manual. I was shooting manual focus lens. If you're just like on the gun, you know, uh, you're just taking pictures, autofocus can be good. But I think, especially during night in some scenarios, the, the autofocus can work against you. Sometimes That's true. Sometimes it hunts, sometimes you can't really get it to focus, or you're just kind of standing there and you you might have missed a shot. <laughs> so. It looks good. I, I think this was my favorite image of the night. They both look really good. No complaints. Oh, well, look at the halation in the light though. I just noticed that. For sure, on like the film, there's like this like, like you said, almost blown out look to it. I feel like blown out can be like sort of a negative term. I, I just think it's, it's more pleasing to the eye than with, I guess, digital cameras. Okay. All right, guys. And this is going to be the last image that we're going to be comparing of the two. Now, this was shot through a window. In Gable's photo, you guys can see it's a little bit more wide. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can actually see the window seal itself and then a look onto the inside here. but. The thing that I'm really curious about is the colors, man. It looks a lot more clinical. <laughs> I, I guess you could put it that way, yeah. Like clean, you clean. know? And I don't know if it's because the exposure was really hard to get with the film, but it, it looks very green. I think for an image like that, though, I, I definitely like the look of the film. You do? More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels like a memory to me. So before we move into our conclusion here, let's do a quick fire round. Um, basically, I'm just gonna be throwing out different topics and then let's pick which vote we kind of put it under. Uh-huh. Like who wins in that regard. So in terms of image quality, would you rather give it to film or the Digicam? Just image quality itself, I think it goes to film. You think so? I think so, yeah. 
Personally, I'd say the same thing, just because there's different lenses that can give you sharper results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of images from digicams that are super sharp, and just in our instance, for sure. I just think the film looked just a little bit better. I, I think so, too. I think a film camera would be more versatile. Moving on from image quality, let's talk more about colors. Which color did you prefer? Uh, I can really appreciate the look of film, but I think I like how I can manipulate the colors with digital. I couldn't really throw to either one in that case. You have to pick one. Let's say you have to pick one. Ooh, ooh. You know what? I prefer, I prefer my digicams. Okay. <laughs> and on the flip side, I'm gonna say film, just so that we're all tied up here, but also because with film, you, you, you can just change your different film stock and get different looks as well. That's true. And a lot of people kind of take pride in the fact that you don't always need to edit film afterwards. All right, now in terms of cost efficiency, which one do you think wins? Honestly, I think this one's pretty obvious. Digicam. Digicam yeah. all day. Like it might be expensive to get the camera up front, depending on what you get. I mean, that's like a one-time purchase and then you get your 16 gigabyte SD card and mm -hmm. you're pretty much set. You got everything you need to mm -hmm. go. This one's gonna go to the Digicam. Which camera do you think has the better shooting experience? Honestly, this one's tough. It, it is, cause you know, I think it's just convenient to, um this thing i pick up a film camera i look through the viewfinder it's just it hits so much different so you you're taking film i i actually am i'm not gonna lie wow i remember i was looking through that viewfinder yeah that night and yeah. i was just man that's a bold statement that's crazy it is it is but and yeah. let me let me fill you guys in gable shot film as well and he kind of pulled back and he's starting to shoot more digital so yeah. for him to say film on this one, I'm actually really surprised, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you can get back to film, that's what I'm cheap. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm cheap. <laughs> on the flip side, guys, ah, it's tough. I love my film cameras. I think they have the best shooting experience of all time. So in a way I agree with Gable, but in terms of pure fun, I really do think digicams and the fact that you can take them into concert venues, you can take them to yeah. parties, to clubs, you can go out, you know, with your friends and you got that built-in flash. It's so tiny, you just stick it into your pocket. It's like having an iPhone, but rather than it just being all in one phone, if you wanted like a dedicated piece of gear to take photos mm -hmm. that you could take anywhere with you, the Digicam's going to do that for you. And so even though I love my film cameras, I love shooting it, I see the Digicams more as like a low pressure, fun mm -hmm. piece of gear to take with you. It's, it's a good break from shooting. Right, you can take it anywhere. So I'm gonna say Digicam on this one surprisingly, <laughs> which is probably bad because <laughs> this channel is about film. But you guys, that is a tie between both of these cameras. Honestly, we tried to go through each of the different categories and so far the playing field is level right now. So we're gonna leave this one up to you guys before we move into our final conclusions. Drop a comment down below which one you guys think you would prefer. And then uh, yeah, we're gonna kind of put some more votes up on here. If you guys enjoyed the Digicam, drop a like. And if you guys enjoyed the film camera, leave us a comment down below telling us why. Do you think a Digicam overall, can it replace a film camera? I like to treat them as two separate experiences. I just really like both. You know, I, I, I couldn't really choose between each one. You know, I, I these days I like shooting Digicam because I don't have to pay for film and uh, it's just a lot more convenient mm -hmm. for me to just throw this around. But uh, film is good in its own ways as well. Yeah. Do you think it can replace a film camera? So I think <clears throat> in some aspects, a Digicam can replace a film camera depending on what you're looking for. Say you just want a disposable sort of look, I think a Digicam can replace that. I think there are some qualities of film that you can't find in a Digicam yeah. or wouldn't completely replace a, a film camera. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it can really replace a Digicam. Here's why. Like you said, they both offer different shooting experiences, but what I really think it comes down to is convenience. You know, if, you, if you're a person that wants instant results, and you want to be able to also save money, it's just more convenient to not have to buy film, develop film, send it out, wait a couple of days, or even develop your own film or get it scanned. Like that's a lot of process that goes into just seeing your pictures. In, in terms of convenience, I do think it can replace it, but it won't replace the look of film. You know what I mean? Like the convenience factor, it, it, it's definitely winning over the film. But film to me just gives you a very unique experience, not only with just the way the images look, but as well as with shooting experience. Cause even though that's a more fun camera to shoot most of the time, cause you don't have to think too much behind your images, uh, shooting a film camera, feeling those tactical dials, manual focusing, 
Not to mention like there's different cameras out there like point and shoots, uh, range finders, you have medium format cameras. Uh, you even have like cameras like the F3 where you could literally pull off the prism right here and you can shoot this like it's a waist level camera. There's, there's a ton of different you know options out there whereas the digicam more or so seems all consistent where you know you have the smaller camera usually has a built-in flash and it's gonna give you consistent results every single time but just to answer the question in this video I definitely think digicams cannot replace film in that regard for sure but you guys, that is going to wrap up this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to follow my boy Gable up on Instagram at Doku. I'm going to leave all of his stuff here in the description box below. But like I said, folks, let me know in the comments down below which one you guys prefer, which one you guys think you would shoot more. Um, any final thoughts? Nah, thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you in the next one. As always, middle to gang. I should say film gang for this one. Did you cam gang? Oh, hell. Uh